19th June, BJP President Amit Shah called a meeting in Delhi for the party's Jammu and Kashmir state unit. Responding to the call, the BJP ministers in Mehbooba Mufti government also made their way to the national capital. At 2 p.m. in Delhi, BJP General Secretary Ram Madhav called a press conference. In Srinagar, Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti was working in her office. At 2.15 p.m., in the presence of the party's Jammu and Kashmir leadership, Ram Madhav announces that the BJP is pulling out of the alliance with PDP. In Srinagar, the BJP's decision is conveyed to the Jammu and Kashmir Governor's office, from where a call is then placed to the Chief Minister's office. At 2.30 p.m., the Chief Minister of JNK, Mehbooba Mufti, for the first time learns that the BJP has withdrawn from the coalition. By 3 p.m., after having consulted senior party leaders, Mehbooba Mufti decides to quit as the Chief Minister. At 3.30 p.m., having sent in her letter of resignation to the Governor, Mehbooba Mufti made her way home as Kashmir once again plunged towards political uncertainty. And once again, another coalition government in India crumbled away before its time was up. The game of coalition politics had been played before, at the state level and at the centre. The tussle for power and lure of it made for strange bedfellows. And so it was that in February 1971, for the first time, national parties teamed up to fell the Goliath. The National Democratic Front saw the Bharatiya Janasangh, Swatantra Party and Socialists come together to join senior regional Congress leaders who had broken away to form Congress O. The mission was to dislodge Indira. Indira Gandhi struck a pre-poll alliance with the DMK and the CPI and won big. But the opposition coalition unsettled Indira and her insecurities led to a state of emergency existing in the country between 25th of June 1975 till 21st of March 1977. In 1977, when elections were called, the opposition came back together and stronger. The emergency years had hardened their resolve. This time, the coalition partners merged under one banner, the Janta Party, led by Jayaprakash Narayan. Well, uh, well, she got a terrible drubbing from no one less than a buffoon, I think Rajnara, and Sanjay uh, lost two. And I came to see them when she was now in a different house and very woebegone, looked very sad. And I asked her, Mrs. Gandhi, ye kya hua? She said, we feedback nahi tha. Because she'd been told the feedback she got was that uh, she was very popular and would sweep the polls. This is her own uh, government uh, information agencies. So I said to her, Mrs. Gandhi, feedback kaise hota? Apne press ko to band kar diya. Janata Party itself was a coalition. There was no ideological like-mindedness. It was a political like-mindedness. It was anti-Congress coalition. An alliance forged in the hour of the need to combat emergency and Indraji at that time. But these experiments didn't succeed for a long time. None of them succeeded for full time. The Janta Party sank under its own contradictions. Infighting and deep-seated internal feuds tore at the heart of the Janta movement. And by August 1979, the Janta Party government had come crashing down. The first non-Congress government's shot at power proved short-lived. When it came to reconstruct the society, these differences of opinion on how to do it was 
already there from Jansang to Socialist Party and also the Communists were in that um, experiment to re-establish democracy. So it was obvious that there should emerge certain differences and the Janta Party could not reconcile with the ideological differences that were inherent in the very formation of the Janta government. A shot at power is usually the one and only reason that political coalitions come into being. And in 2015, what was touted as an unholy alliance in Jammu and Kashmir reiterated the point once again. The 2014 Jammu Kashmir Assembly elections had thrown up a hung assembly. After months of rumours and negotiations, the PDP finally announced it was joining hands with the ideologically very dissimilar BJP to stake claim to form the government. Many within Kashmir saw this as a betrayal by the PDP. And although both parties justified the alliance as the best solution to bridge the gap between Hindu-dominated Jammu and Muslim-majority Kashmir. We came to the view, conclusion, that the present scenario cannot be handled by the present government at this juncture. And we find our continuance in, in this government to be totally untenable. It's, it's time that matters are taken over by the governor. Situation is uh, restored to normalcy. Then we can take the political process forward. Jammu Kashmir may boycott, treat Jammu Kashmir as an enemy territory. This is not our enemy's territory, this is our Jammu Kashmir's people's territory. That's why there is no muscular policy here. But unfortunately, it didn't come to the other side. And somewhere else, the one who tried to get rid of the other side, that the ceasefire should be finished. उसमें सीज़ फायर खत्म हो गया, मगर हमारा ये मानना है, हमारा ये कहना है कि जम्मू कश्मीर में जो पीडीपी का एजेंडा है, हीलिंग टच पॉलिसी का, जो पीडीपी का एजेंडा है कि जम्मू कश्मीर में पाकिस्तान से भी बात होनी चाहिए, यहाँ के लोगों से भी बात होनी चाहिए, ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा रास्ते खुलने that suspense gripped the political scene at the state level. In May 2018, Karnataka witnessed a dramatic power tussle to establish a majority in the Vidhan Sauda. The Modi Shah magic failed to garner an absolute majority, and while their leaders tried to cajole and rope in opposition members, the Congress made a swift move to form a coalition, and that brought them sweet victory. Nano. Nano. It was a moment for the Congress to gloat over. Their coalition bids had been on a downswing for more than a year. In Bihar, the BJP broke the Mahagat Bandhan. In Goa, the BJP with lesser number of seats pipped the Congress by cobbling together a coalition that could stake claim. <laughs> and across the northeast, from Tripura to Meghalaya. The BJP, often with lesser number of seats, managed to stitch coalitions that kept the Congress out. So when five chief ministers from five different parties, leaders from across the political spectrum, politicians who rarely shared the same podium, waved, hugged and smiled together, it was a message that was being sent to the BJP, Target 2019. Politics is not a morality test. You know, let's be clear, it's not as if uh, the Karnataka Alliance is the first immoral alliance that has been struck in this country. They've existed in perpetuity. These are rival chieftains who reach a stage eventually when they say, let's have an alliance so that we can maximize our territory. And uh, I don't think anyone can really take the moral high ground in electoral politics. Politics is, like it or not, Sam Dam Dandabhed. Yeah. 
May 2018 was definitely not the first time when the Congress joined forces with others to keep a powerful opponent out of power. The ground rules for the coalition games had been laid down in the days when the Union of India was still trying to find its feet. On occasions, the ideological like-mindedness plays a part. As far back as 1952, Congress entered into a coalition with the regional parties of the day to prevent the Communist Party from coming to power in the old Madras component state. At that time, Rajaji, who had been earlier Governor General, was requested to become chief minister. The Congress, with its first mover's advantage, ruled the roost across India till those fateful years of emergency. Those 21 months that first saw the coming and then the inglorious fall of the Janta government. But in 1977, there was another coalition that came to power, not in Delhi, but in Calcutta. A coalition of left parties that was to remain in power for seven consecutive terms. A coalition that survived for 34 long years. So too in the southernmost corner of India, in Kerala, there have been two coalitions that came into existence in the 1970s. The CPIM-led Left Democratic Front and the Congress-led United Democratic Front and they have been regularly swapping power every five years since then. But in Delhi, a full decade would pass after the fall of the Janta experiment before India heard rumblings of another coalition challenge. And as before, this time too, it was a Congress veteran who gave the coalition call. After the failure of Janta Party experiment, VP Singh had the opportunity following the defeat of Congress party in 89 to form a Janata Dal government. But BJP and CPM supported his government from outside. <laughs> What VP Singh did was to bring regional parties to the central stage. He brought together a motley of regional parties ranging from the Telugu Desam Party to the DMK and the Ahom Gonoporikhod to form the National Front. This image, splashed on all newspapers, heralded a new era. The coalition defeated Rajiv Gandhi-led Congress in the 1989 parliamentary elections and with outside support from the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Left Front, VP Singh became the Prime Minister of India, but only after a Machiavellian ruse cleared his path. Chandrasekhar had made it clear he would settle for anyone but VP Singh as Prime Minister. An elaborate game of duplicity followed. Chandrasekhar said, Vishnath, if you contest, I will contest. Then, then Devi Lal took Chandrasekhar away in a room. After that, Chandrasekhar ji left. Then Devi Lal said, look here, aap humari ijjat rakh I said, kaisi ijjat aap ki rakh sakte hai? Chaudhuri sahab aap ki ijjat 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 aap Vishwanath Pratap Singh proposed Devi Lal's name for the post of leader of the National Front. Chandrasekhar seconded it. Devi Lal was elected unanimously. Then the old man got up and he said, this is the first time in world history when the leader, a election of a leader of a parliamentary party is held in this country. 
The country watched in dismay as inflated egos collided publicly. Chandrasekhar screamed betrayal. No, the decision was taken to choose Devila. BP yeah. Singh to propose, myself to second. Yeah. It was altered at the last moment without my knowledge, without consent, without information. Would I don't know. You ask those persons. On the 2nd of December 1989, VP Singh was sworn in as the seventh Prime Minister of India. And Devi Lal, the Deputy Prime Minister. But the seeds of conflict in the ruling coalition had already been planted. By the end of 1990, the BJP pulled the rug and the VP Singh government came to an end. Chandrasekhar cobbled together a government with the help of Congress, only to be pulled down within months. And so began the era of coalition in Indian politics, when minor players played major roles. It was almost assumed that the days of single party rule was definitively over. The minority government of Narasimha Rao led Congress that opened up the economy only proved the point further. Mr. Pivinas Sarao's government was in a minority. It was in a way indirectly being bolstered up by the Janta Dal and BJP alternately. When he introduced those huge economic changes because the need for change in economic policy was shared by everybody. A coalition sometimes represents the consensus better. A single party government has its own virtues. But single party governments also tend to become arrogant. In 1996, a 13-party United Front coalition came to power and first Deve Gauda and later I.K. Gujral from the Janta Dal became consensus prime ministers. The government was propped up with outside support from Congress and CPM. Once again, another coalition boasted of a plethora of regional parties coming together to make a government in Delhi. The United Front broke the monopoly of single parties at the centre, bringing with it a new style of functioning. Now, a consensual approach had to be worked out for governing policies to please everyone in the coalition. It's not as though all regional parties, irrespective of politics in their states, will sink their differences and forge a bond of unity. That's impossible. The reality is ambitions conflict among leaders of regional parties, a lack of ideological lack-mindedness lack comes in the way of their unity. Above all, the lack of numbers will prevent them from forging a successful front. In 1998, the BJP came back at the head of its National Democratic Alliance coalition. The NDA lasted just 13 months before the AIADMK pulled out support. It was only in the 1999 election, after the Kargil War, that the NDA won 303 seats out of 543 in the Lok Sabha, and this time, the alliance stuck together. But in the next general elections, the NDA lost, and the Indian National Congress led the United Progressive Alliance to form the government with outside support from the left, till nuclear talks forced the left to pull back on ideological grounds. Manmohan Singh, do swear in the name of God. The UPA under Manmohan Singh went against the convention and proved a governing coalition can continue for a full term and then be re-elected. I 
कि आपने मुझे जो जिम्मेवारी दी है इसको पूरा करने में शरीर का प्रत्येक कण समय का प्रत्येक क्षण सवा सौ करोड़ देशवासियों को समर्पित है Thirty years of coalition governments later, the arithmetic changed in 2014. Narendra Modi led the BJP to win 282 seats, giving it a majority by its own, and the National Democratic Alliance made a stellar comeback with a total of 336 seats. In the four years since 2014, the BJP numbers have dwindled a little. reigniting the question of whether the bjp needs its coalition partners more or is it the other way around in be it 2004 be it 2009 be it 2014 and the coming elections in 2019 we have seen political uh, uh, parties um, moving towards the agenda that they try to propagate and having a coalition of sorts we have seen that repeatedly uh well this kind of uh, messaging that we see in uh, or the bjp tries to propagate that the 2019 election is about prime minister modi versus rest it's completely nonsense because there are a lot of political parties which are backing the bjp and there are a lot of political parties which the congress is trying to grow, uh, drop a uh, alliance with coalition so what is it in political parlance the lust for power the unseemly alliance of divergent ideologies the opportunism of the moment or is it plain hypocrisy on occasions certain negative kind of ideological like mindedness bring parties together you've gone into the elections fighting against each other asked for votes abusing each other and then eventually come together uh, to form the government it is immoral it's not unconstitutional and uh, i don't think anyone can really take the moral high ground in electoral politics ideological uh, uh, consistency ideological adjustment is uh, certainly a very important factor so most of these decisions are based on instinct and political uh, 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 understanding watching the video for more such news and updates please like share and subscribe to india today also check out our other great videos from our channel we know you would love to